So we're going to start off with protons. Neutrons, they have an atomic mass of 1, 1, AM, one AMU. Hydrogen, if we take a look at hydrogen, hydrogen has an atomic number of 1. Therefore, it has 1 proton. So its atomic mass should be what? It should be 1, right? Well, if we take a look at the atomic mass in your periodic table, it actually comes out to be 1.008. Like, wait a minute. Okay, you just said atomic mass of a proton is 1 AMU. And hydrogen only has 1 proton. And you said earlier that electrons were so small that their mass is, is not going to affect a whole lot. And definitely not going to be 0 0.008. So where does this 0 0.008 come from? Well, it comes from an averaging of all the isotopes in an atom. So all the different types of isotopes, we find the average of them, and that's going to be 1.008. Well, what exactly what is an isotope? Well, an isotope, remember, is the same element with a different number of neutrons. So let's take a look first at averaging. So here I have some test scores, right? So I have a 5, 5, 5, 5, 3, 3. So there's six scores. So how do you find the average? You take, add them up, and you divide by six. If I did that, would the answer be closer to five or closer to three? We find out, of course, it's going to be closer to, it's closer to five because there's more fives here then there are threes. So that average is going to be closer to that number. Well, we're going to take, a, take the same concept and apply it to atoms. Now, we said <clears throat> earlier that hydrogen, hydrogen has a number of isotopes. It actually has three. Hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, and hydrogen 3. Remember from before that this one represents the atomic mass of this specific isotope. So atomic mass of hydrogen 1 is 1. Atomic mass of hydrogen 2 is 2. Now, if I remember, if we take a look at, uh, i do a quick little review here. If I take a look at the number of protons, all right, Ooh, a little harder to draw here. Protons, and neutrons. Protons for hydrogen 1 is what? 1. Hydrogen 2, well, same atom, same, same element, so it's going to have to have 1. How about here? 1, right? All right, now, how many neutrons does this hydrogen have? This hydrogen 1, well, if we take a look, remember, to find the number of neutrons, we take the atomic mass minus the atomic number, which is the number of protons. So we take the atomic mass of 1, we minus 1, and so for the first one, there's 0 neutrons. So here we have isotope hydrogen 2, one proton, has atomic mass of 2. So take the atomic mass of 2 minus 1 gives us one neutron for hydrogen 2. And hydrogen 3 would have how many, do you think? Correct. You're going to have 3 minus 2, or try it again. 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay, so that's finding out the number of neutrons. So if you take a look here, hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, hydrogen 3, these are isotopes same number of protons, different number of neutrons. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look. Oh, I'm going to go like that. And we're going to give just some random numbers. This, these percentages are going to represent how many, how much of that type of isotope is found out in the world. Now these are just some numbers I just kind of made up. They're kind of close, but they're, they're not 100%. They're not so... <clears throat> So what we do is we take and we're going to find the average mass for this isotope. What we do is we take this 97% and turn it into a decimal point. And what we do is to do that, we take the decimal point, we just simply move it over two spots. So 97 is actually going to be 0.97. You're going to multiply that by the atomic mass of that isotope, which is 1. Okay, And then you're going to add that to the next one. So the, iso so the isotope hydrogen 2, the percentage of that decimal point is going to be 0 0.02 multiplied by the atomic mass, which is 2. And then you're going to add that to the next one, which is oops, 0 0.01 multiplied by 
the isotope of mass, which is 3. Okay, so now if we take a look at the next part here, well, what does this equal? Well, 0.97 is times 1 is 0.97 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.03, which equals, if we add these up, is going to be 1.04. Now, of course, like I said, it's close. If we take a look, we take a look at this answer and look back to our percentages here. Does that is it reasonable? Does it is it possible? When we take a look here, yeah, we've got 97 percent. Yep, majority of it's one. So you'd assume that the answer would be closer to one than anything else. So 1.04, in it in it fits the bill. All right. So if I have this problem, if 45 percent of sulfur found are sulfur 32. And 55% of sulfur is uh, our 35. 55% are sulfur 35. What is the average mass of sulfur? Well, so what we're going to do is just like the problem we did, we are going to take 45% and turn it into a decimal point. So we move that decimal or a, a, a decimal point. So we move it over two two places to the left. So it's 0.45. We're going to multiply that by the atomic mass. So sulfur 32, the atomic mass for sulfur 32 is, of course, that's the mass, so 32. We're going to add that to 0.55. You can multiply that by that atomic mass of sulfur 35, which is, of course, 35. Oops. And if I were to put that in the calculator, it's going to be 14.4 plus 19.4. 25, which equals 33.65. So does, does this number check out? Well, between 32 and 35, what is there more of? There's more 35. So it's it should be closer to 35 than it is to 32. And that does fit as well. All right, well, now we're going to try solving it a slightly different way. So now, could I use percentages with this problem right here? For every two atoms of carbon-12, there are five atoms of carbon-14. What is the average mass? Well, we, we can't do it the exact same, use the exact same formula as before. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, try something a little bit different. Now, what happens here is we're going to take the top part here, the two atoms, and we're going to figure out how many total there are. So like, for example, if you're going to find out your test score, you do what? You take the number right divided by the total number. What we're going to do is we want to find out how many, what percentage is, are these two atoms of carbon-12 of all the carbon atoms out there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 2, okay, and we're going to divide that by 7. Okay. And then, oops, okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that by the atomic mass. So we're going to times that by the atomic mass of 12, okay. So this 2 divided by 7, that's going to, if I would do that, that would give me a percentage, just like the previous types of problems. So we're going to add that to, well, the top number should be what? The total, the number of atoms that we're looking at. Well, well first of all, let's take what are we looking at? We're looking at carbon-14. What should be in the numerator? Five should be in the numerator. Okay, well, what should be in the denominator? Well, there's two plus five, so a total of seven atoms. So there should be a seven in there. So now, if I were to do this math out, I should get 0.286 if I took 2 divided by 7. Now multiply that by the 12. And that will give me 3.43. Now if I go to the other side here, and I, I take 5 divided by 7, I'm going to get 7, or let's try that again, point. 714. Now multiply that by the atomic mass of that isotope, which is 14. 
And that should get me a number that is, take that, I should get 10 by doing it that way. So 0.714 times 14 is 10. And if I add 3.43 and 10, I should get 13.43. If I look at this, AM use, of course, unit label. Because remember, number without a label means nothing. So we got 13.43 AMUs. Does this make sense, atomic mass units, 13.47? Well, it's going to have to be between 12 and 14. Does it come between 12 and 14? Yes, it does. What do I have more of? Do I have more carbon 12s or do I have more carbon 14s? Well, I have five carbon 14s, so it should be closer to 14 than it is to 5, which it is. So this is how you, uh, another way of solving the <coughs> average mass using uh, isotopes.